right? If I can't, if I can't learn from my wife, then who am I going to learn from? Who am I going to learn from? That is one hundred. That is it. That's the hundred. That's the most sensible way of looking at things. I personally agree with that. Like having your essentials and you having your non-negotiables, and then you kind of have your things that you can negotiate on. That's a sensible way of looking at things, but. I think too many people, men and women, have everything grouped into one list. And it's like a checklist mentality. And it's like, oh, he doesn't check that. That's it. On to the next one. Here we, and they're looking for these. I don't know where they sort of found. Who told them about these men who exist or women who exist. But they don't exist. That's the thing. Like, they don't exist. They don't. Like, this perfect image of a, a woman. Like, some man want a woman who's successful and they contradict all of these things they contradict each other you want a woman that's successful you want a woman that's a housewife at the same same time you want a woman that's in shape you want a woman that's beautiful you want a woman that's honest like this woman is a unicorn she doesn't exist she doesn't everyone's got their flaws if there's gonna be one of your checklist boxes that can't get ticked because that's just not it but are you willing to give are you willing to say okay you know what i can work with you on that that we can work on. And that's what I think a relationship's about. It's not about two perfect people getting together and living a perfect life. I think that's a myth. The, the perfection doesn't exist. Yeah. Not perfect man, not perfect woman, therefore not perfect relationship. The whole thing, is, I'm gonna go back to that word, is about growing with each other. You, you know, you make a mistake, she, she, he or she makes a mistake. You learn, you, you've learned to forgive and, and the person who made the mistake acknowledges it and tries to do better. Not that we won't make a mistake. Of course, we'll make a mistake again because we're human beings. But we try to learn from our mistakes and we try to, to better ourselves, right? But it's, look, you know, so somebody who's been married for 32 years, right? All I can say is that I know, as much as I like to think, oh, Rodney, you've done great, you've done this, blah, 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 blah. I know that I, I wouldn't be a fraction, not a fraction of who I am if it wasn't for my wife, right? Something she knows directly and something she doesn't know. Something she doesn't know that sometimes when I'm thinking about something, I, I go through my head how she thinks about it. Because I think the way she thinks about it is more productive than the way I think about it. So I have to suspend who I am for a minute and I adopt her mentality. Right. And, and what I'm saying is that, but that doesn't happen overnight. So there are benefits, huge amount of benefits for working at something, right? And really, when I say getting to know somebody, like you know their DNA and they know your DNA, right? But it doesn't happen overnight. And you know, my phrase about this instant generation, we have to kind of reverse engineer our thought processes for, in order for, we're talking about both sexes, in order to try and have that fulfilling relationship, not perfect, fulfilling relationship that we, everybody, man or woman is, is looking to get. How would you, if you go back to what you said about approaching things with, you know, what your wife may think about it, some may look at that and say, how can I put it? I think some men have an issue where they're saying, you know what, I can't let anyone impose how I think about things. And, I, and I'm, I'm a bit of a believer that actually, do you know what, you should consider someone else's point of view, but you should ultimately make your own mind up. You shouldn't let someone make your mind up for you. But how, could you dive into a bit more about how you do that? How you start That's, to consider me, someone else's point of view without letting go of your own, without letting so, go of your own point of view. So a situation is that, um, what, what I meant by my explanation was this, is that I know uh, there, there is characteristics that my wife has that I know, I think uh, the word is not better, but she's be in certain situations the way her thought process is the better way of thinking about things and i have i have acknowledged that my way is not the best way and her way is better for certain situations that's not me suspend of that's not me adopting letting her th think uh, uh, speak for me but what i'm talking about is just the way she deals with things in certain situations i have over the years learned to observe and accept willingly happily that now the way she deals with things in that such is much better than the way i would naturally deal with it and what i what i what happens is that when i'm in that situation 
I, I suspend how I want to naturally do for a moment. And I think, how would she deal with it? And I think about how she would deal with it. And I thought, okay, let me, and, and then I adopt it. It's still my words coming out. But what I'm doing is the, the template that I have observed over the years and admired. For me, that, that is me being smart and sensible, right? If I can't, if I can't learn from my wife, then who am I going to learn from? Who am I going to learn from? That is 100, that is it. That's the 100 That's the most sensible way of looking at things. But that's another problem with this, this modern relationship generation is that everyone's competing against each other. You well, want to be in a relationship, you want to be in a relationship, but you're competing. You want to be better than me at the same time. Why don't you just, why don't you just sit down and admit that I might be better at this and you might be better yeah. at that and let's yeah. bring it together. But no, it's, it's not like that. It's not like yeah. that at all. And it's like, and as I say, it's like, if you want a independent woman, sometimes women look at you like, oh, what? You don't want to look after your household. You don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to be the man in the house. But you know, there's a lot of men that have, you know, got with women who have influenced them and catapulted them to new heights, new ideas, new ways of thinking. So, 100%. you know, you have to have that open mind of, you know, and your open heart to, you know, want someone, but I feel like a lot of, you know, and I'm African, I'm Nigerian. So a lot of that kind of tradition, you know, that kind of Nigerian tradition starts to permeate in the relationships that you have in the UK, even though we, we don't live mm -hmm. there. So there's this kind of perception that, you know, the man needs to do everything, you know? So a lot of women don't feel like they need to check on us because the culture is very mm -hmm. like patriarchy and it's yeah. just like men handle everything you do that you do that and that starts to seep into the mindset of other generations to where now you know a, lo a lot of women it's just effort it's just the simple things like effort it's my birthday i'm not saying i want you to fly me to new york but you know if you know i like something if even if it's something small just buy that because that's what means a lot to us we're not gonna make a big deal like oh you didn't do this for my mm. birthday but the fact that you show that little bit of effort and i think that a lot of women don't believe that they need to do that because it's all about the men securing the ring and you know you chasing me until you know i'm ready to kind of stop being chased and i just think that times have changed from that but this is the game like the game was one way and now it's a new game now it's yeah. a new game and women can't approach it in the same way like i find it funny sometimes where you hear about women who have been single for a long time and then all of a sudden they're ready to get into the dating market and they feel like the world just opens up to them like hello guys i'm think i'm ready now to take anyone who wants me and it's like come and get me <laughs> no no it doesn't work like that you have to get onto the field like the men are getting onto the field as well now it's not like that anymore <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like you can't just you can't just get on the field and just and secure just be like, it hey, pass me yeah. the ball no no you have to go and <laughs> you have Listen, to go and get the ball yourself and, and run and, to the goal trust me and that's what i say to girls and they look at me in disgust you have to start putting in work now trust because me. the landscape has changed like, you know true. even a, a few weeks ago one of my cousins who's single was at a wedding everyone's around the dance floor so it's an opportunity everyone's there looking everyone's you know everyone's doing their thing you know she's all the way at the back in the corner but she wants a man so i'm saying to her look you want a man all the guys that are at the dance floor, mm. you know, putting it out there, looking and see, and yeah, you're yeah, all yeah. the way at the back, just chilling, thinking a man's going to leave the dance floor, walk all the way to the back to you and get on one knees and, and propose to you. That's not going to happen. No and way. it's that Prince Charming, Disney idea, Snow White, whatever like that. He's coming to save you. And this, unfortunately, <laughs> it's just not, it's not, let's be honest, but I think, I think, no, I think, honestly, pretty I think, woman. I think, yeah, I think, yeah, that's, that's, Uncle, you know, but that is, that is what it exactly is. Bodyguard, that. all of these films. <laughs> and I think that's the problem we have, like, between men and women. Like, I think sometimes men are a bit afraid to be honest with women because it comes across like we're being rude or, we're, you know, we're, we're not considering their feelings. But we care about them. And the truth is, if you want to know what's really going on, you need to listen to what men are saying and what they're and trying to get their will, I will, I will. <laughs> I'm saying it's not an attack. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. not an attack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not, we love you guys. We love yeah. you. Know what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. But you have to yeah. listen to what we're saying, and yeah. then once yeah. you listen, you'll get you have more success. Yeah, it's, it's true. It's, it's true. It's true. You know, and it's, it's like Lloyd. You said something just now earlier about things permeating into 
you know, different cultures and, you know, over the, over different times. I wonder if that is also part of it. I wonder if trust is somehow the way that, you know, some people are taught how to trust a man is trickled mm, down a bit yeah. through generation. I wonder if mm. what they feel they need to do is trickle down into generations. Mm. You know, you may not have witnessed, you know, let's say you live in a home, you know, mother and father are there. You may not have witnessed your mum do anything, but yet they've been married 30, 35 years, right? So in that scenario, as much as you've seen something work for that amount of time. You haven't seen how it what, works. You haven't seen how it works. Yeah. So actually what you're taking from that is actually my dad treats my mum like a queen, right? But you're not seeing what she's course, also doing. Yeah. Sometimes you've got a bit, sometimes you have like, you've got your blinders on when you look at your parents. But I think sometimes if you take a step back sometimes and look at your parents' relationship, <laughs> as, yeah. not as your mum and dad, yeah. it can be a bit of an eye opener. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> not not for, you know, for, for all different reasons, you know, mm -hmm. not all bad, but, but also good reasons on, as well. I think that depends on your structure. If your mum and dad are still together, then yep. you're going to see it where my parents weren't together. So I always mm. felt like I had a, a idea of what, like a, mm. not a bad relationship yep. is, but I've, I've, I've seen what the result of it um, mm. is. And it does have an impact. Like a lot, a few of my close friends, their mums and dads are together. And I do think if we analysed it, that would, you know, that play that has benefits in seeing that kind of, relationship grow and you know how your parents stay together for like onks has been together for 30 years that's a long time that's a lot of information that's a lot of knowledge that's a lot of kind of things that you can unpick to see okay onks what happened here in the 10th year in the 15th mm -hmm. year where you know if your mum and dad are together and you're living with your mum you sometimes don't get that kind of idea of what it is to be a husband or how to conduct yourself if you haven't visually seen it hey, what you could be. Oh,